Good evening, guys. All right. To my sisters. You want to know why you are having such a hard time in your relationships? The reason why you're having such a hard time in your relationships is because you are out of order. And what I mean by you're out of order is you're not going about it the right way. You have to understand that whatever orders that God set in place from the beginning of time before you and I or anybody else, you know, any other family members were created, it still stands today. For God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, it is so. He's not changing anything that he set in stone because if he changed it, then it would make him out to be a lie. So, whenever you are operating outside of God's ordinances, things are bound to fail. So, when you are coming together with a man who is not your husband, Things are not going to work out the way that you would want them to. Yeah, they might be good for a little while, but somewhere down the line, things are going to fall short. It's inevitable. And <clears throat> if things, you know, don't fall short and you know you happen to be in that same uh the same state of of not having that marriage covenant and Jesus returns then there's a strong possibility that hell is where you're going to find yourself because fornicating, which is basically you having uh, sexual relationships outside of a marriage covenant, that's an abomination to God, okay? And this is what his Bible speaks on. This is what the word speaks on. Um, uh, I'm trying to see if I could... If I could find a scripture that talks about that. Um, I know it's in here. I think it's, it's, it might be Galatians. Galatians might be one of the books that talks about, you know, fornication and how it's an abomination to God. And those who practice such, they will not inherit the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Look it up yourself. You can Google it. Um, <clears throat> so, when you are in these relationships, okay, you are outside of God's blessing. Um, now, what I'm what I'm saying. Or who I'm I'm truly addressing this to is believers. Okay. Those who are believers in one God, one faith, one baptism. Okay. Um, believers in, you know, there being 
you know, God and him having a son, you know, who was born of a Virgin Mary, you know, which came and died for the sins of the world, that being Jesus. I'm speaking to those who believe on that. If that's not what you believe on, then this does not apply to you because this is who, these are the people in which the Bible is, is, Addressing the type of people in which the Bible is addressing, okay, those who believe on this. All right, so I just wanted to make that clear. I don't want no misunderstandings. All right, so when you, as a woman, are dating or are dealing with men who are not your husband, then you're basically opening yourself up to the devil having a field day in your relationships because you don't have that covering. Marriage is a covering, okay? Marriage, you know, is something that God blesses because that is what he ordained since the beginning of creation, man and woman. He ordained that. Um, so, from that, I'm going to move on into those of you who are married. What you have to understand, and it, and if you are not married and you desire to get married, there's something that you have to understand, is that once you become married, your husband now has rulership over you, okay? The reason being is because it was the woman who was deceived not Adam. Now, prior to, you know, the deception in the garden, man probably, the husband probably didn't have this rulership over the woman. God was the head of the man and the woman. But because of sin, that, that, that dynamic changed. Now, the man is now to rule over the woman. God is the head of the man and man is the head of the woman. It's all right here in the Bible. I cannot go to what scripture it is. I have to, I can go to it, but it's, it's going to take me a minute and I don't want to be on here. No 30 minutes trying to, to explain this to you guys. Um, but it's 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 in this Bible here. Uh, that's how I know this because it's in the Bible. <laughs> I'm not. I can't. I can't speak on something that I have not read. All right. But <clears throat> your husband has rule over you, and you are to submit unto your husband because of this, all right? Um, now, this is something that I was now, I was married. I was married once. I was married for 11 years. At the time, I was uh, a Christian, okay? And... I remember some conversations that, you know, me and my ex-husband had when he was like, you know, uh, basically I need to learn how to submit or I have a problem with submitting or uh, there was some other stuff that he was saying. But to hear those words or hear that word, it was like it was like a thorn in my side. 
And the reason that it was a thorn in my side is because I did not understand the importance of submitting to my husband. I did not understand that that was my position as a woman, according to God, to submit to my husband. Um, I wanted to do things my way. You see what I'm saying? But you have to understand that in in this 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 well, okay, I'm not gonna get off into that because then it's like I'll be going towards the male's uh position and I'm trying to stay strictly with the women, okay? Um but some women, some of you women, you will argue, okay, well, you know, if your husband, he's he's very, um, he's controlling or he might not be as understanding, might not be as loving. Um, he might show some type of disrespect or um, dislike towards you in some type of way. What you have to understand, one of the benefits that we have as women and as believers, one of the benefits that we have when our, or when our husband is not acting right, we can go to the Father or God and God will put that man in his proper place. That is not our job as women to try to correct the man and put him in his proper place if he's wrong. <clears throat> That's God's job because God is the head of the man and the man is the head over us as women. Okay. And when we try to go out, outside of the chain of command, I'm going to say, we mess ourselves up, okay? Um, but like I said, I had, a, I had a time, I had a hard time submitting to my husband, my ex-husband, because I didn't understand the importance of that. I didn't understand that this is what God had set in place for me to do as a wife, I had no one to teach me that. And though I, I I read the scriptures, you know what I'm saying? That was, even though I read the scripture, there was still a part of me that, that could not accept that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's like now, you know, as I've, I've, I've gone through what I went through in my marriage, you know, you know, divorce, and, you know, I experienced, you know, things, you know, outside of being married, you know, relationships, this, that, and the third. Um, that helped me to, to gain a, a different perspective when it comes to submitting, okay? And... The journey that I went on to try to find the truth, you know, I came across some 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 new age doctrine, you know what I'm saying? And from that, it's like I was able to to take the 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 meat and spit out the bones. Um It's like I, I I had to come into a place of learning how to to accept myself, to love myself. And in the process of doing this, it's like I found a new, I guess you could say, 
a new understanding of God's love and from that it's like I began to see the error of my own ways now this is not to say that the new age, this new age doctrine is what it is that you're to go to in order to find this. No, this is, this is, this was, this was my journey and understand that God, even though I was in this, this, this doctrine, God had his hands on me the whole time. And because God had his hands on me the whole time, I was able to take the good out you see what I'm saying? And leave the stuff that was not was not conducive to my, my growth, my spiritual growth. I was able to leave that out and hold on to the good and 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 really do some inner reflecting to to see where I dropped the ball when it came to my relationships. Um I was able to take accountability for my own actions and to see exactly where it all stemmed from. So there was no longer a place for me to, to, or excuse for me to place blame because my own errors were put right before my face. You see what I'm saying? So it's like after, you know, I left that, that new age doctrine and I came back to, you know, the word of God, you know, it's like everything that I experienced, the good part, I held on to it. And it's like, once I got back into God's word, his word opened up to me that much more. And I was able to appreciate, you know what I'm saying, my position as a woman and not only appreciate, I was able to understand why God put this, this, this particular chain of commandment in place as he did, if that makes sense. Um, so now it's like for me, when I think about, you know, because I'm right now I'm I'm single. And I'm 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 waiting for God to to send me my husband, you know, versus me going out there, <coughs> you know, dating, <coughs> trying to see if this is the one or is that the one. No, 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 no. My prayer was for God to, you know, work on me and to prepare me for the husband that He has for me, the husband that He God has for me, not the husband that the world has for me because I was going more towards worldly men. You see what I'm saying? There's a difference between a worldly man and a godly man, but I'm not going to get off into that. But I wanted a godly man. I wanted a man who was after God's heart. I mean, truly after God's heart, you see? And that that is a very special man and and i needed to be i want to be able to um recognize that man when god send him to me and in order for me to recognize that man i have to work on some things within myself you know and come into alignment with god's word as to how me as a woman is supposed to be okay and and how I am supposed to conduct myself as a wife because that is what I desire um and the only way that I would know this the only way I would be able to recognize this man is if I am again in alignment with God's word that is the only way okay um so it's like with that just the thought of it alone, it brings me great joy. And I no longer look at the word submit as an offense. 
I look at it as a blessing because I'm going to see if I can find this particular scripture. Um, uh, I know it's somewhere in here where um, basically, you know, when a woman is to to submit herself to her husband, she is to do it as though she is doing it unto the Lord. You see what I'm saying? Um, because in essence, you are. Because the husband, because God is the head of the husband. You see, the husband has to answer to God. And the husband is the head of the wife and we have to answer to the husband, you see? So if at some point the husband is not, you know, doing his part in alignment or whatever, then we as women, we can go to God. We don't go to the husband and rah, 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 rah. no, we don't do that. We go to God and talk to God and say, you know, God, hey, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then God would deal with that man. So it's like having that understanding that if at any point of me being married, if if my husband, you know, steps out of line, knowing that I have I have God, I can go to God and talk to God about whatever issue it is, and then God deals with that man. And trust me, God has a way of dealing with people far more better than we can, than we ever can. He can set the record straight quick, fast. It don't take him no time. You see what I'm saying? And he does it in such a way that it doesn't cause more issues. But when we as women, when we try to take on, you know, any type of disagreement that we may have with our, our spouses, when we try to take this on ourselves, that's just going to cause more conflict. Why? Because we are, we as women, we are very emotional creatures. And we tend to get in our emotions. And when we get in our emotions, then it's like our voices raise, you know, and, and we start speaking things that, you know, we don't necessarily mean, but just strictly out of emotions. And it just it's, it escalates the situation. You see what I'm saying? Um, but it's like for me to know that, okay. I can go to God and talk to God about whatever it is that my husband is is failing to do in, in, in his part as a husband. You know, I'm thinking about this. I'm like, I, I can embrace that because I am doing it not to my husband, but I'm doing it to the Lord, to God. My submission to my husband is me submitting to God basically, because this is the order in which God set. You see what I'm saying? It's not me looking like, okay, well, because the man has rulership over me, I'm supposed to just, you know, do whatever he say. And, you know, it's, it's not, it's not like that. It's, is you have, once, once you, once you get a relationship with God, once you understand truly how God operates, how he moves, you as a woman, you wouldn't have no problem with submitting to your husband. Because you will have that understanding that when you submit to your husband, you are submitting to God. When you are being unruly to your husband, you're being unruly to God. These are things that you need to take in account when you are looking to be married or if you are already married. Keep that in mind, okay? And I know that it's, 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 one, it's one scripture that it tells us to, um, I think it's submit. I might be quoting this one, but submit ye one to another so that our prayers will be answered or something, something like that. Um, but this is, is also, it's a group, marriage is a group effort. 
it's not just the woman, you know, who is supposed to do do this, that, and the third. The man has his part that he has to play also. But we as women, if we play our part and we play it well, we play it in a, in a way that is pleasing unto God, God will hear us and God will move on our behalf. Okay. Um, I know it's, I can't remember. My, my mind is, is I'm tired and then it's like, I'm not thinking straight and two. It's like, there's so many scriptures that I done searched on this, this, this topic. I can't remember them all, but, um, If you were to read first, uh, is that first Timothy? First Timothy two, um, uh, I would say verse eight through fourteen. That one talks about you know the role of a woman, or the guidelines for women, and also Colossians, um, Colossians three, seventeen and 18 <clears throat> and there's countless of others countless of others that will help you know women who are you know looking to be married and to you know prepare themselves for that godly man my suggestion would be to get a godly man not just any man because these these this Word does not apply to just no any man. No, this applies to those who are believers in this word, hearers of the word, and the doers of the word. Okay, this is this where where God's blessings comes in at. Outside of that, that's that's on on Satan and and all his his workers. Okay, um, you follow along those lines, but. If you're already married, you know, and you don't have that understanding or you're struggling with it, my suggestion for you is to get in the word that much more and and allow God to really open it up to you, open your heart up to receive his word. So therefore, you know, you will be blessed in your marriage. Okay. And if you're having any issues, you know, God will hear your prayers because you are in alignment with his word. If you're not in alignment with his word, the chance of God listening to your prayers is slim to none because you're not doing your part as a woman. So your husband is, is being, you know, disobedient or unruly or whatever the case is, and, and, and you're going at him versus going to God, you know what I'm saying, like you're supposed to do, God's not going to hear you. You can't, God is not going to go out of order. He is a God of decency. He is a God of order. And he do everything in decency and in order. That's what we ought to do. I believe that's how that scripture goes. It's been a minute since I read that scripture. But yeah, you, you have to fall in alignment with God's word. Period, point blank. There is no way around it. You cannot, you know what I'm saying, go against the chain of command. Things are not going to work out for you. So I just wanted to, you know, uh, share a little bit of my story, you know what I'm saying, and to hopefully help those of you women who, you know, had a struggle with the whole husbands having rulership over you as a woman uh and why that is again is because it was it was it was eve who was deceived not adam it was adam who was created first not eve okay um so because of that god put man in charge and you should take that as as a blessing it's like that's that's stress off of you you see what i'm saying but you as a woman was created for a help me to help that man now don't 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 get that twisted don't get it twisted it's not like you supposed to just sit back and just twiddle your thumbs and a man just do everything no 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 
You as a woman, you have a part to help that man in doing what it is that he's supposed to do and being the head over you, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. So I'm going to end this video and try to give me some sleep. And in the meantime, guys, peace, love, and blessings. Mwah.